So, um, call the meeting to order, 6.03. And I'm just gonna read the, the script really quickly, please. Um, this is Mary Fritz, the chair of the building committee, library building committee. Uh, I wanted to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Can you all hear me? Great. Um, and when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, we'll go Beth. Present. Lisa. Present. Julie. Present. John. Present. Irene. Present. And is uh, um, Prabhu? Present. And Doug, are you out there? Not yet. Okay. 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 Um, so, this open meeting of the Grafton Planning and Building Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the Governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted to the town's website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with deliberations of the meetings. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care of the <coughs> by yourself. Uh, for items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first read public comments, questions received in advance of the meeting, followed by real-time board and or applicant respons responses. Public comments during the meeting will be conducted through the chat feature in Zoom. The chair will read real-time comments, questions typed by computer participants in the chat feature, followed by real-time board applicant responses. Uh, and then finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay, so we start off with the minutes. So the minutes were um, emailed out, Beth, thank you for sending those out again. They are dated um, August 30th, 31st, 2020. Is everybody all set with those? Maybe we get a chance to look at them? Okay, great. So we need to we need to approve those vote. Okay. We need so a motion. Somebody want to make a motion? This is Beth. I'll make a motion to approve the August thirtieth minutes as submitted. I'll second. Okay. A vote by roll call. Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. John. Aye. Doug. Aye. Irene. Irene. Aye. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't hear it. And Mary, aye. Okay. Mary, can I just ask a question? Do I need to note in the um, minutes for this meeting um, the two people who are guests, or do we just note guest? I see two people who popped up. Um, I see a 774 number and then Mark Johnson. I'm sorry, Mark, if I'm supposed to know who um, you are, but do, do I need to note that in the minutes? Okay. So can we confirm yep. who 774 is? That's, this is Andy. Oh, hi, Andy. <laughs> Actually, I, I, have a, I have a question on that, Lisa. Would we normally write down the names of people who are in attendance at a physical meeting? I think we have. I, I mean, no. we have had too many. I think we've only yeah. had one or two people come, but I think I've I think I've written them down. Yep. Okay. okay. So I'll, I'll include Mark's name under um, guest. Okay. Great. Um, so, bills. Andy. Yep. All right. Um, I sent them out ahead of time, but we can go through them one by one just in case there's any discussion. Mm -hmm. 
The first one is for DRA, for um, the design team. This is just their, again, their monthly invoice um, for where we are right now. So that invoice is for 22,461 and 76 cents. I make a motion we pay DRA $22,461.76. Somebody second that? Second. Okay, vote by roll call. Beth? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Prabhu? Mute, 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 mute. Aye. John? Aye. Doug? Aye. Irene? I'm not getting Irene. Irene? Aye. And Mary, aye. Thank you. Okay, Andy. Keep speaking up. I don't All right, know why. Next one is. Sorry? Uh, next one is for Ecotech. So that's our uh, wetland scientists. They were on site for the planting of the replicate wetlands. Um, so this is this is his cost for for being on here for a few hours. So it was two hundred dollars and seventy five cents for Ecotech. I make a motion that we pay Ecotech two hundred dollars and seventy five cents. I'll second that. Okay. Vote by roll call. Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. John. Aye. Doug. Aye. Irene. Aye. And Mary, aye. Thanks. Andy? All right, next one is for LGCI. Um, these are, this is one of our independent testing agencies that deals with the structural side of uh, uh, the, the soil and the material in the ground. Um, this is for the period of June through August. Um, they are out here a couple of times and did some field reports. This invoice is for $4,074. Um, I'm going to make a motion to pay, but do you foresee any more money for that? They have a, a balance remaining in their budget of $2,608. I make a motion that we pay LGCI $4,074 for June and August, through August. I'll second that. Okay, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. I had a question. Okay. So following okay. up on Lisa's question, so uh, if all the groundwork is done, do we still have any uh, geotechnical work? Is that what you meant when you said there is some amount pending on the budget? Um, I think there might be one more round of, of uh, testing for them to do. We have to do some compaction underneath the, um, the, the slab on grade inside the building. I think they might be back for that. Okay. Hi, Mai. John? Aye. Doug. Aye. Irene. Aye. Mary. Aye. Thank you. Andy. All right. We have two identical bills from um, Sunbelt Rentals. This is for the temporary air conditioning units that were at the interim library. Um, so there are two of them. Each is $3,643.16. That's for, um, I believe that is for August and September. I make a motion that we pay um, Sunbelt Rentals for August $3,643.16 and Sunbelt Rentals for September in the same $3,643.16. Second that. Okay, is there any questions? Vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. John. Aye. Doug. Aye. Irene.
Irene was a yes, a yay. Okay, and Mary. Yes, okay, so that's another one where it didn't pick up again. Sorry, I did say it. Okay, and Mary, aye. Thank you, Andy. All right, uh, this next one is for UTS in May. Uh, this is for concrete testing uh, and cores. So this one is in the, in the amount of $3,165. I make a motion we pay UTS concrete testing for $3,165. I will second that. Okay, any questions? Okay, by roll call, vote by roll call. Beth? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. John? Uh, aye. Doug? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Mary, aye. Thanks, Andy. Yep, the next one is again for UTS this is for September. This is both for structural steel inspections and also for concrete um, concrete work. Um, so this is in the amount of $2,145. I'm gonna make a motion, Andy, but before I do, I know it's kind of a big jump between May and September. Did we pay June, July, August, and we just missed May? Yeah, they just, I don't know if we missed May or if they missed May, but either way, May was missed. So we're up to date with everything else with UTS. All right, so I make a motion that we pay UTS two th for concrete and steel testing for September, $2,145. Second the motion. Any other questions? Okay, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu? Aye. John? Sorry, John, I didn't hear you. Uh, aye. Great, thank you. Doug? Aye. Irene? Aye. Mary? Aye. Thanks. Andy? All right. Next one is for Weston and Sampson. So they've been our. Um, our licensed site professional are the ones that have been doing all the DEP filings and getting bills of lading ready for um, for uh, shipping material uh, earth off of off the site. Um, so this is for September, and the total for this invoice is twenty four thousand dollars thirty twenty four thousand thirty eight dollars and sixty three cents. I make a motion we pay pay Weston and Samson twenty four thousand thirty eight dollars and sixty three cents for September's work. You second that. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa? Aye. Julie? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. John? Aye. Doug? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Mary, I. All set. Thanks, Andy. Andy, before yep, you get yep. the bills, can I ask you, um, we don't have a bill from DS, DAS Sullivan or Collier's this month. Is that true? That is true. Um, is Paul on, is uh, Mark on the call? I am. Um, yeah, I'll have to check. I think maybe it got mailed out instead of emailed, so it'll probably catch uh, up next month, which is fine. Okay. All right, and Collier's, um, you know, they've they've missed a month before. They they generally do bill us, but they haven't been out here to do any work, so they may have just held off on their invoice. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So the next uh, the next one is not well, it's an invoice, but it's the requisition from CTA. Um, I sent this separately because it wasn't ready until later. Um, so this is this is the construction management company's invoice. For, uh, for the month of September. This has been uh, thoroughly vetted. We've pushed back on, some, you know, we generally are, are we review um, both Mark and I and Ken and Ron all review um, the percentages complete for each one of these items that are, that are in here to make sure that they match what we've seen on site and what we, what we know. Um, so we've, we've, uh, we've vetted this one pretty, pretty thoroughly at this point. Um, so the total for this one is $1,112,747.66.
All right, let me read that back. I'll make a motion, but let me make sure I read it right. EPA rec number 11 for September in the amount of $1,112,747.66. That's correct. Second set. Does anybody have any questions before we vote? Yeah, Doug? Uh, just a quick question. So when you look through that spreadsheet that has all of the items broken out, there's yep. there's no way for us to know which portions were added to that one million. What do you mean added to it? Well, I mean that one million consists of some fraction of each of those line items, but there's no way for you to know which of those were part of that. Oh, there is. Uh, in column F, it says that we're completing oh, this see. period. I got it. Yep. I see it. Thank you. That's really that's really the only one you need to scan down. That one shows you sort of where the money is. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sometimes, Doug, just to follow up on that, I don't have it in front of me, but it'll list work this period, and then in the adjacent column, it'll say stored materials, or because generally, in a normal course of work, there might be material stored off site that the site's not ready to receive yet but it's been fabricated and they want to get paid for it. This is an incredibly unique situation where we've got room and we've got all the material, so everything's going to be on site, ready to roll by the time they need it. So it's in really good shape. Yep. I was just trying right, to get a feel of kind of like what, you know, obviously what's what's been done the last month. Yeah, that's the column to pay attention to work this period. Right. Yep. So in fact, the aluminum storefronts and entrances um, fall into that category of materials uh, that are presently stored, but not on site. So there, uh, there's a bunch of work that's been fabricated uh, along, along those lines for the aluminum storefront, um, but they're not all on site yet. Any other questions? Okay, so we will vote by roll call, Beth. Hi. Lisa. Hi. Julie. Hi. Prabhu. Hi. John. Hi. Doug. Hi. Irene. Hi. And Mary. Hi. Great. Thank you. So that's it for bills and the rack, Andy? Correct. All right, great. So now you're up again, clerk of the works. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not going to go through every bullet point in my report. You can, uh, if you're, if anybody ever has any questions about what's in there, please just let me know. Um, but if you've gone by the site recently, you can see the exterior of the building is in really good shape. Um, all the exterior framing and sheathing is on. Today we actually started uh, some waterproofing the uh, waterproofing on the outside of the building. Um, the windows have all been have all been uh, have received blocking. The the dormers are taking sh are really in taking shape. Um, the flat roof you can't see from the road, but the flat roof uh, is substantially completed. Um, so there's really been a lot of work on the exterior of the building. If you could go up onto the second floor, the, uh, almost all of the walls up there are frames. Um, the door frames are in. Uh, so there's been a lot of work that's happened up on the second floor as well. Um, the other major item that's happened just recently is all the, um, the electrical conduit that goes under the first floor slab that goes underground um, has all been put in place and today it was mostly backfilled, uh, getting ready to pour that first floor slab next week. So that was a, that was a big, big milestone to get through. Um, took a lot of, you know, just a lot of planning and effort to get all that underground stuff, uh, you know, mapped out uh, and, and installed so that's that was sort of a big uh, a big milestone um just overall you know the, we're we're on schedule in terms of the in terms of the, the overall construction schedule i have a little bit of a concern we've had a few things slip slightly um you know when when brick was going to start has slipped a little bit and the slab on grade was originally going to start um this week on thursday and now it's next week um, those are kind of significant things because when those get done, it creates more work for a lot of other trades. So um, we're going to have a you know scheduled discussion tomorrow at the construction meeting, um, and they owe us a um, an updated overall construction schedule as well. 
Um, there's still a lot of time left, so I'm not really worried about it. It's just a little bit of a, a thing. Just We're just noting that there's been a little bit of slippage to that overall, overall schedule. Um, the other item to note is just, uh, you know, safety's been good. I would now I would say it's just been good. There's been some minor stuff that seems like it comes up every week on, our, on the safety reports. So that's going to be another topic of conversation tomorrow. Um, just to make sure that everybody's really doing all the little things that they're supposed to be doing. Um, so nothing major, no accidents, nothing like that, but just, uh, you know, it's better to, to nip this stuff in the bud before or it becomes commonplace and, uh, and people don't do what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and then the last one that I wanted to mention specifically for this group is that the, the on-site mock-up was completed there were there are two color choices out there that were painted on the clapboards um, Hubbard squash and pewter tankard um, or yellow and gray for you people that like to keep it simple um, and the historic district commission did come and take a look at that and they all nearly unanimously but an overwhelming margin uh, thought that gray was the more appropriate color uh, I'm not really sure yeah, this is a good discussion point for all of you. Uh, how that final decision gets made, I, I told um, the construction manager that it certainly needed to be discussed at this meeting. Um, so that this committee um, had their own say. I don't know who has seen those um, color samples and who hasn't, but it's, um, it was, that was certainly the direction that the Historic District Commission thought was appropriate was, was gray. So that's, uh, that's kind of my report. Andy, can I ask yeah. you, um, on the report that you sent out today, you said that the roofers had started the work on the slope roof under protest. What was that about? Yep. Um, it's just a little bit of a disagreement about who owns that scope. Um, we think it's silly because the, the roofers are claiming that, that you know, that that um, that bit of work came out as an addendum, and the incorrect spec section was referenced in the paperwork that came out with that. But clearly, it's still roof. So they're sort of trying to say that it wasn't wasn't their scope, even though it clearly is. So um, what I'm hearing from CTA is that they've they've since sort of quieted down, and they're going to accept they're going to accept that it is their scope, and they do own it. So that's what that's what that means. That means they're going to move they're moving forward. They're doing the work but they, they wanted to discuss it some more. An odd situation because there, there are several different roofing provisions and the, the division specified by addendum, they're saying that's not our division, that's not the correct division, it should be a different division, but that different division is work owned by them anyway. So it's this circular argument that ends up back with the same person. So it's like an odd, odd protest. Andy, I had a question. This was um, on the cost update. It says there is a separate uh, cost report, updated cost report attached. I couldn't find it. Was that sent? This was the one I, I, I like to look at, wherein it says what was the approved, what is the budget number, where are we with the cost and stuff. Yep. No, I, and and I I meant to edit that, um, but I had already sent it. So I owe you that still. I have a uh, I have a couple of updates. I needed to get some information from accounting. And um, Tina has just come back from her maternity leave, so I um, and I, I needed to get also some change order numbers uh, from CTA, and I needed to get the final rec from CTA. So I had a few things that were pending from from some other people and couldn't give a a, a really accurate, completely up to date um, uh, update on the on the on the spreadsheet. So I'm going to have all that stuff. I've got most of that information right now. I don't have the rest of it tomorrow morning. So tomorrow afternoon, I'll have that cost report out and I'll send it out to this group. Okay. I had one other question. In terms of schedule, the last meeting, there was, there appeared to be, at least from my perspective, there appeared to be some contingency or buffer left from a schedule perspective. I know you, you didn't want, you, you said that let's, um, let's wait and watch. Um, do you still feel we'll be well within the uh, the original timeline, or do you see the, any of these minor impacts whatsoever leading into impacting the end date? No, I don't think there. I don't think we'll see any impact at the end date. We're still looking at the beginning of June. I mean, we're 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 expecting an update, uh, a, a construction schedule update from CTA shortly. 
but I don't think there's been nothing that's significant and up just yet. And we have a lot of time left. So no, I, I'm not expecting the end date to move right now. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have questions? Okay. Um, Mark? You want to give an update on from the OPM standpoint? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it uh, brief following on Andy's uh, summary. But if, if you look at the, the background picture that Doug has up, um, we're starting to use this from month to month, which is a great way to look. So <laughs> at this point of year, uh, at, at this point of the schedule, the, the biggest thing is to get the building weather tight. And that'll allow all the interior work to proceed. And so from looking at this picture, you can see that the walls are up and the roof, the exterior walls are up and the roof is up. Um, we need windows, skylight, and the roofing. The, the flat roof, as Andy mentioned, is all but weather tight. We're working on the slope roofing. Um, the windows are on site, the skylight is on site. So that installation can proceed pretty quickly. And all that yellow board you see, the exterior sheeting, the air vapor barrier, which Andy mentioned has started, that installation has begun. That will allow the masonry to go um, The masonry is a, is, a, is a critical item. If we can avoid cold weather masonry, that would be preferred uh, because once you get into heating, the, the, the masonry has to be kept at a certain temperature 24 seven. And you know, early October, that's manageable. Early December, January, depending on the weather, um, sometimes that gets uh, could be problematic. I don't see <clears throat> that as being an issue. They're in a good groove and they have all the material. Um, so while that's happening on the outside, as Andy mentioned, they're going to be pouring the ground floor slab, first floor slab next week, which is another big milestone on the schedule that will allow all the first floor framing to begin. Um, and going into the month of November and the holiday season, they should be in pretty good shape and be able to have a weather type building and just kind of hunker down for the winter months and 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 be aggressive on the inside. One thing with architecturally with a library, because of the nature of the building, a lot of libraries big open space. And so there aren't a lot of bathrooms, a lot of offices, a lot of things like that. It's it's somewhat manageable from a construction standpoint. So right now getting the building weather tight is is certainly the uh, the biggest thing on their to-do list. Uh, but they've got kind of everything all lined up uh, to do that. We don't see any uh, hiccups down the road, at least short term anyway. Does anybody have any questions for Mark? I, I might have missed it um, with Andy's, but the second floor slab, um, I assume that that's, is that also in October? No, so that's already poured and most of the walls are already oh. up on the second floor and most of the door frames uh, are already up on the second floor. So um, that was the metal deck. And yeah, so- Yeah, that's right. I remember this now. Actually, I was, I was meaning the, um, the stairs, like to get up to the second floor. When did uh, those go in? Not yet. So we'll, have, we'll pour the first floor slab and then they'll field, I think the rough steels they have and, and the, the bulk of it is being fabricated, but they'll have to, field dimension between floor to floor to make sure they have all the dimensions right. And then they'll get that. So right now it's just ladder access up and down. Yeah, okay, thank you. But you could, I mean, from the existing library to the new, uh, it's set up so that you could, you could take those openings down from the second floor of the existing library and just walk onto the addition. Okay, anybody have any other questions? Okay, great. Uh, Ron, do you have an update? I certainly do. Um, quickly on construction, uh, as I said, it's been going along very quickly. And I have to say they, um, they've been doing a really good job. The um, Tony and the company doing all of the interior partitions and framing the steel stud framing has been very attentive um, we've had a number of conversations on site working out minor details uh, asking questions 
he's really been very good and I feel very comfortable with um, how he's progressing. And in general, I, I've never seen a building go up this fast, considering the things we had up front. Uh, so they're really doing a fantastic job. Um, in terms of the mock-up, we picked up uh, one or two minor items that are not a problem. Um, it's good that we had the mock-up. One is the corner detail for the brick masonry work. So we uh, were pointing that out to CTA and uh, just calling their attention to a detail that's already in the drawings and confirming the trim thicknesses um, to make sure that they have the right thicknesses. But aside from that, um, the mock-up looks good. As, uh, as soon as we get a color selection for the siding, we're good to go. From a design point of view, if I can share my screen, and my apologies to the design subcommittee. Oh, uh, the host needs to enable me to share. Okay, I'm the host now, so you're all in trouble. Um, here we go. Okay, can you see my set my screen? Okay, uh, my apologies to the design subcommittee for not getting this out to you beforehand but I basically had to redraw uh, a fair portion of the finish and furniture plans um, because of some changes in the, in the files. So right now we're looking at the first floor combined finish and furniture plan. And I'm gonna go over this quickly. Um, we can talk more in depth with the design subcommittee when we schedule a meeting. But basically, I want to call your attention to some changes here at the main entrance, where we still have that diamond marble, existing marble in the middle, added two smaller diamonds at the entrances to the program space. And we kept the diamond in the coffee area. We just turned um, all of this surrounding tile to the darker color. And in the go to the adult, uh, the teen section, um, I was able to clean this up a little bit. This is a detail area with a, a one meter by one meter square accent carpet. So I was able to, now that I have the furniture in, um, I was able to adjust that size uh, of the size of that space and line things up to make it look nice and organized. And then we still have the same pattern right now for the sheet goods in the team space. And then in the children's area, in adding the furniture, I was able to, we had talked about this earlier, deciding where to do the accents. Again, those are the bigger one meter by one meter squares. So what I'm proposing right now is that we put the accent carpets under the soft seating. Um, that's where you have the, you'll see it the most, excuse me, <clears throat> you'll see it the most and it doesn't interfere with stacks and other um, tables and whatnot. So this is what I'm proposing for the accent areas in the children's room. And then this was one of the uh, layouts for the sheet sheets in the uh, children's program space, where these dashed lines show the separation between different colored um, sheet vinyl, as well as some accent colors in these rectangles. That's the first floor. And if we go up to the upper level, um, we have the one meter by one meter accent carpet going down the center. And we have in the, uh, let me zoom, oops, let me zoom in a little bit. In the large print area, 
we show a field with a border around the perimeter. And I was able to center the furniture in those areas. Um, I will need to, I may need to do a little cleanup here and here. Um, I have to look at that with Ken because right now it lines up nicely with the columns, but not so nicely with the shelving, but I'll work that out. And then at the other end, <coughs> I had to shift some of the furniture around um, to make it work better with the pattern and with the traffic flow. We originally had the seating group and two tables in this one square with this table here in this center square and the same thing for this table in this center square. I felt that in order to make it fit within the borders, <laughs> just got too tight in here. And I did not think that people would want to sit here and sit here and have people walking that closely behind them. So I shifted the soft seating up. I um, made space for three tables within the square. And then we can talk about other possible furniture items, maybe display cases or new book displays that could go in the center area and keep this really open for, um, for um, circulation. But the offices and everything else is basically what we discussed at the last meeting. So what I'm going to do is send this, these two files out to the design subcommittee members for further thought and review and any recommendations you might have um, or any questions you might develop. I'm also going to send this now that I have it straightened out. Um, I'm going to send it to the carpet manufacturer and they will be able to now put in renderings of the carpet into the CAD plan for us so we can see how the patterns work in real time with the actual carpet. And additionally, I've also been working with the furniture um, representative and we ha I have a few more questions to get uh, answers to get back to her, but they are revising the budget, uh, the original budget for the furniture based on the current layout and some questions that came up in my last meeting with her. Um, and then also the other next step will be to further develop the wall finishes. Uh, we talked about some ideas of accent colors and where they might go. Um, I need to finalize that, uh, refine it and um, hopefully get um, buy-in on those ideas and wrap up the furniture and finish package. The next package will also be interior signage. And that's, a, that's another critical package that has to be worked through um, and discussed. Um, I don't know that, and Beth, you can, uh, give me some guidance on this. I don't know if the entire subcommittee needs to be involved with that. It's not really necessarily picking out the signage as much as what the signage verbiage is, what the, you know, the text is, and where these signs go. Uh, we may want input from the design subcommittee on the dedication plaque. And if there's a donor plaque, we'd want subcommittee input on that as well but the general signage is really just um, kind of a, a mechanics kind of type of thing. It's not really a design issue as much as, you know, here's the typical sign. What does it say? Where do we, where do we place it on the wall? I'd like to schedule a subcommittee meeting for next, um, I think it's Tuesday the 13th. Yes, today's the uh, 5th, tomorrow's the 6th. And I know that was one of the dates that Beth had offered up as um, a possible um, meeting date that we can get together at the temporary library 
in person and go through, um, you know, hopefully I'll have um, the renderings back from the carpet. The carpet folks, I'll have more information about furniture, wall colors, et cetera. Um, so does that work for the design subcommittee? Great, Beth, do you wanna send out an invitation for that? Okay, and I will send these out to everyone. Um, I will also, I, I know I owe Beth copies of the plans that we discussed in the last meeting. Um, I, was, I was able to find them and now I can send them out to, I had files in two different places, um, but I have everything on hand now and I will send um, these along with the last, the, the plans last discussed so, uh, for the record. I have, I have a question about the soft furniture in the um, adult reading room. It, has that been selected or are we going to have um, types of chairs or whatever that are options? The adult on the now, are you referring to the these old part of the library? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, what we're doing is putting together recommendations and a budget to be reviewed. So we're not making final selections. We are not in a position to place orders, but we will be coming back with rec you know um, uh, cut sheets for the recommendations and a budget as to where we stand with the furniture. Does that help? So that will be at the next um, subcommittee meeting. I'm so aiming for that. that. Yeah, I don't know that I'll have the budget back by then, but um, I hope to have at least cut sheets to discuss. I'm, I'm more interested in what's being proposed. Right. Yeah. So I'm more interested in the budget. So when we talked a few months ago, or actually it might have been five months ago, there was some discussion about that if we do go over that the furniture would be a place that we could save a little bit of money. So are we going and just ordering everything we need or are we, um, are we gonna put pause on certain items until we see what's available in the budget? That's a call for the committee. Um, what we're doing is, but as I mentioned, proposing, um, making recommendations and getting a budget put together based on those recommendations. Um, I would imagine that before you move forward with placing any orders, we'd want to check and see where we are with the construction budget. And so far, I think, I don't think we've gone over budget or are in a position where we have to worry mm -hmm. too much. Uh, Andy and Mark can correct me on that if I'm misspeaking. No, you're right. But one, one thing to note, the, the grant was predicated to a certain extent on the, on the size of the rooms and the furniture in the room. So, man, so many um, adult chairs and tables and shelving units for the circulation. So the shelves might be empty when you open, or, or a third of them might be empty and you might grow into the shelves, but they want space for those shelves and they want those shelves to be there because I think MBLC's fear is that if you don't get it now, you won't, get, you won't ever get it. Um, and so there is some wiggle room on, um, and certainly on the type of fixture, uh, whether it's new or used or donated or whatever, but the requirement for the fixture, for most of these fixtures, um, uh, it will be a requirement. And so uh, there's some latitude, but, but not a ton. If you're going all new fixtures, it, you're, you're, you're limited on the quantity, but certainly not the quality. So I think this first pass that Ron will give you saying, this is the type of chair we were thinking of for the, you know, the overstuffed stuffed adult chair where you want to sit down and read a book. This is what we thought of. And if you say yes, then you can keep going and and get some budget information in a similar way that we did with the flooring and so forth. So before I would be comfortable voting for anything, I would like like some sort of update on the contingency and what's left there and yeah. how much more we have to go. Like just an, a, not, in, not a weeds, but like something definitely upper level about where we are with that. 
Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we're going to look at all this stuff all at once um, so that everybody gets the full picture between the construction budget and the furniture budget and everything else. We'll we'll take we'll we'll take a good look at all that stuff um, before we make any commitments. Thank you. And Lisa, also, the furniture doesn't need to be ordered until like for, for quite a while. Some of the lead times might be as long as 12 weeks, but a lot of it's like six weeks. So we're not going to be ordering this for a while. So we'll have a much better idea. It's good to figure out early the direction that you want to go, but yep. we have some time. Yeah, right. Is that true? Um, I know I'm waiting for a couch and it's taking them over 12 weeks to get me my couch and carpet. Is that true? Are you <laughs> finding a COVID delay in things like this? Yeah, certain manufacturers, because yeah. they um, can't do the proper social distancing, they definitely have cut down on production. Yeah, and there's also been issues with supply, supply chain. Uh, even manufacturers getting materials from their suppliers uh, because of transportation, um, uh, materials not being available for other shutdowns. For example, a chair manufacturer might not be able to get the upholsteries from the fabric manufacturer in a timely manner. So we do keep that, we have been keeping that in mind for our projects um, that we do have on the books. And we do check with the, with the reps to have them check uh, with their manufacturers to see what their lead times are looking, uh, looking like. Now, if we're talking about a, I believe a July completion, July, 2021, we'd want the furniture in place or ready to go by June. So around January, just after the first of the year, I'd, I'd like to be in a position to place an order. Um, and at that time, you know, earlier on, keep checking with the, manuf with the rep rather uh, regarding delivery lead times. Because I'd rather have the furniture there it's usually the you want the furniture to be the absolute last thing to go in aside from the books because you don't want um, electricians and I'm not singling out any trade my dad was an electrician but you don't <laughs> want tables to put light fixtures in right and trust me I've caught my father doing that a number of times um, <laughs> but, um, you, you do want the furniture to go in last but you don't want it going in after your open date <laughs> are we open for questions oh i'm sorry yeah go ahead yeah on the first floor layout in the children's room you had those um those those grids where the chairs were going to be yep um well is that is that typical? Uh, I guess the thing I'm worried about is, you know, five years down the road, we decide to, we want to reconfigure this room. Is that going to cause problems in, you know, how you reconfigure that room? Not necessarily. Um, because this is carpet tile and you will have a certain amount of attic stock, it can, in theory, be reconfigured. Yeah. And it, it, I say in theory only because you never know how you're gonna to wanna to reconfigure it five years from now. Um, that's always a concern with um, patterns and borders. Is yeah, what happens. Like those, like those lower two, the, the one that's kind of like a, an L or whatever. I mean, it seems yeah. like those two, if they were more towards the entrance, they would be a pattern that wouldn't cover up something that you're gonna end up putting there. But like where they are now, it seems like if you were to reconfigure that room, that might be in the way. Now maybe just never, those are always a sitting area. Just a question, thanks. Yeah, that or being taught, everything being tiles, if you decide to, to move this, let's say over here, you should be able to take the tiles from here and move them over here. Um, that's that's a possibility with this pattern. There's it's not a distinct pattern. It's just that this tile is different from this tile. But that uh, honestly, carpet carpet patterns and accents are always something that we um, 
have to try to figure out, well, what if they change it down the road? And there's not always a good answer for it. But it, this not being broad loom, it gives you more flexibility. It does give you more fix, flexibility. Any other questions? Okay, so that ends the architecture update. Um, we'll meet next Tuesday at what's whatever's a convenient time. Uh, just let me know. I can be there whenever. We're guessing six. Julia, six, okay. Andy, Doug. Six. Yep, it's okay for me. Yep. That's fine. Six. Okay, six Thanks. p.m. next uh, Tuesday, and you'll send out the invitation. Great. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Ron. Um, so, John, do we have anything from the historic district? Thing, and I missed, and I'm not sure why. I think at another meeting, but I missed the uh, the meeting where they discussed um, the the color selection. So, um, Andy, I'm not sure how the vote went down. I haven't talked to anybody to get a sense of, of what people wanted. Do you remember? Um, the, to, to tell you the truth, the majority of it happened right here on site. Uh, they were out here. They actually came out here to look at it. Right. That's why, because I didn't um, go. <laughs> yeah. Beyond, beyond that, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, that's. I think that's the, where most of it happened was right out here. And but there were people that wanted the the non gray, the yellow, orange, whatever. I think there was I think there was one. <laughs> one. Okay. I don't remember who it was, but there was one person that said, oh, I kinda like the yellow. Yeah. Did they say anything about because that's part of the um, application this the color and the final plans of what the building's gonna look like have to are um need to be included in the um, final application to the historic district. Say that again? Did they bring that up at all? Did they bring up, uh, because John Morgan, because he was the chairman when this started, uh, typically at our meetings will say, you know, we still need to get a final application that has, because of the initial application was, this is the plan, this is what we think it's gonna be that we need to get a, um, I guess, as built or as planned to be built um, document that has the colors and that has you know, all the choices, the brick, um, so on and so forth included. Um, you know, I've talked with somebody it's, about it's, that. And I don't remember if it was you or if it was the somebody else in the committee the last time I was on uh, one of the meetings um, is, Maybe we should, maybe I need to follow up with with you or Bill or somebody just to find out what exactly that needs to have, and I can pull that information together. Okay, because I think if I can't remember for sure, it seems like uh, the the architects had and said, I'm not sure if they submitted initial something. They had to have submitted something, and I'm not sure if. If that's all, if all that needs to be done is to be updated, um, that I that uh, I'm not sure. So that's something to check. Is Ron, are you um, uh, uh, yes, familiar? Yeah, with I I will check. I'm sorry, I will check with Ken about the application and the status of. I, that. I think maybe it was Ken that, that he would follow up. Check with him. he may have done it or maybe working on it. Yeah, I thought something in bid started, if not submitted, but I will double check. Okay, thanks. Mary, you're on mute. Okay. Uh, Interior Design Subcommittee. Does anybody have anything else to add to 
for that. Okay. Um, we are on to public input. Is there any public input? I do have a couple other questions. I'm not sure if that would fall under here or next after this. Okay. Um, yeah, we do it here. Yeah, sure. Um, two things. One is a question. Um, the front gardens that have been kind of dug up um, for the uh, conduits and all that stuff, is it in our project budget to replant that work or is that outside the scope of the project? Andy, you want this one or we, we, we yeah, looked at the I'll take I'll, I can take a moment. We were just talking with the uh, landscape architect today and CTA. So I need to check on this one because it sounded like CTA may have actually bought out replanting that with the landscaper. Um, but I just need to confirm with them that they actually bought that out as part of his contract. Um, and if that's the case, then we, then we, we own something up there. Um, so I can find that out tomorrow. I'll, I'll know for sure whether that's the case or not just so that you know, Doug, that if, if it's not the case, that that's obviously a great opportunity for a donor to step in. Yep, okay. We, we tried to, the, the drainage that went around front, we tried to position it, or we asked the question if we could move it away from the building so as not to disrupt the plantings, but the civil engineer came back and said, no, it's gotta be where it is. And by installing it, you end up ripping up most of the plantings up there. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then the second thing is, um, as part of the, as a member of the capital campaign, um, I just wanted to give the group an update and had a few um, things to, I guess, bring to the committee. Um, we've had a lot of exciting work already. We have some donors for some of the projects that are beyond, outside the scope of the project. Um, for a few of those, um, for example, the, the, the patio that's going to be outside the children's room. Um, we have, I think we have five potential projects um, for that, the adult patio, the vegetable gardens, um, and the roof patio. So there are a number of these items that we need to get, I guess, conceptual designs from the architect um, and some cost estimates to try to understand the scope of those projects. Um, so I think I'm coming to this committee to see if, you know, we can come to the architect for them to Put together some of those conceptual designs. Um, I don't know who would end up paying for those. I mean, it's such an early stage. I was hoping that would kind of come under the purview of this committee um, for funding that work by the um, architect. Um, but I, I guess that's more of a question for the committee. So, for example, the children's garden and patio, you know, I need to have some kind of rough estimate on, you know, what the architect would envision for that space. Um, and then uh, a ballpark price is as is a 10k or 20k or 50k. Um, and then, of course, once I feel like once we decide we get a donor and we decide to move forward with that, then of course that donation would pay the architect fees for you know building out that design. And I don't know if Andy, if you have anything else, any other comments or Mark. Well, one thing would be on, on the timing of those if we prioritized because some things like the outside garden, we have time because none of that's been constructed versus the rooftop garden, which uh, I've heard rumors of. And, and it was in one of the, if you remember way, way back, it was in one of the earlier iterations for the project, uh, which I think, I think the MBLC rejected to or some, somewhere it, it dropped off, but um, that work is ongoing now. So, it's, that's one of those things, the longer we wait, the more it's gonna cost. And maybe it's, it won't be cost prohibitive, but it's gonna cost more just because CTA is just, they're moving forward. And so um, uh, of the ones you mentioned, that might be the only one that's, that's time sensitive. Uh, I mean, right now, today, time sensitive. Uh, and, we and there are different, there are different types of green roofs. I mean, they do make a system that goes on top of a completed rubber roof. Right. Yeah. Um, so there, there are still some options, but right, Mark, that one, you know, if we wanted to get a, a, if we wanted to get water up to that location, that that's a, there's some, there are some things that would be better done sooner rather than later. Um, 
Uh, Ron, I, I did when Doug was out here today to talk about all things landscaping. Um, I did just bring up with him and I told him I was going to talk to you about it tomorrow. Just the, the notion of, you know, what, what, what Doug here is, is talking about, being able to maybe quantify or loosely define some individual uh, projects that are potentially, you know, donor um, ready that, uh, that could, be, could be conceptually um, figured out now and sort of, um, again, just sort of quantified a little bit. And then, you know, those could be sort of marketed to potential donors. And I was thinking that the majority of the stuff would obviously happen in the springtime, but I think we know some of them already, but I, I asked um, the landscape architect today, um, just through, sort of through you to, to be putting that in his, in his head, just about are there other opportunities around the, around the site and what might those be? Okay, so you talked to Doug Searle? Yep. Okay. Very good. So, I mean, I mean, my plan was to put together the list of the items um, that at least are kind of at the top of the list now, and then sharing it with uh, Andy, and then I guess sharing it with the other appropriate people um, to try to get some of those numbers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it sounds like for us, it would make most sense to get the numbers from um, the architect so that we can then as a committee talk about it and, and see how we want to move forward with it. It's kind of hard for us to come up with any kind of, uh, just to, to, to vote on anything when we don't know any cost numbers or anything. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, of course. Ron, yeah, this is something, Ron, your office could put together, say this particular item, rough order magnitude would cost $5,000 to design and twenty-five dollars to $35,000 to implement. And then yeah. so that if they give the go ahead, we know, you know, roughly where we're headed. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And obviously it depends on the, the scope of that project, but um, can you also not necessarily now, but estimate how much time it would take for you to get to that point, like come up with that conceptual design and cost estimate? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We can tell you I, that's how we would base our uh, our estimate of a fee is roughly how long would it take us to do this? How many hours? No, I'm talking about the first step, like how much time it's going to take you to do that that first step. Oh, right, because that's the part that someone's got to pay for, I assume, up front. Yeah, that's simple enough to do. Okay, great. I can talk to Ken and we can work up a, a simple number. Otherwise, yeah, it's uh, exciting. I mean, I know um, next July is going to come up really quickly for everyone involved, especially the, uh, the, pro the project committee and the project work. Does anybody else have anything? Okay, so that's it. Uh, we have the next meeting set for November 2nd and uh, at 6 p.m. So we've changed it back to 6 p.m. Was that the final? Okay. Um, all right, great. So let's say we adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn at 7.07. Second that. Okay, vote by roll call, Beth. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Julie. Aye. Prabhu? He's off. He had, okay. to go, he had to go to planning board. Gotcha. John? Aye. Doug? Aye. Irene? Aye. And Mary, aye. Awesome. Great meeting, guys.